Action Call for Saturday, April 4th, 2020, 3 p.m. Eastern. Uh, we have, as, I'm, as I've shared with everybody, that we have a... Um, um, nighttime meditation coming up tonight, and I believe it's at 10.45 p.m. Eastern. the 
God within him. And to have a relationship with the God within him. See, after a while, after we all move ourselves in our own way, in our own direction, and through our own decision, and we move ourselves to a point where our relationship with the God within us is very, very uh, deep and intimate, uh, a lot of things that have been created through our collective consciousness on this planet, <laughs> excuse me, will not be... It won't be of interest to us, if you know what I mean. Uh, have you ever, in, in, this, in the life you're in now, have you ever gone through something and, and, and someone is very excited about whatever it is, and yet your interest is not there? Kind of like that. Uh, where it, it isn't disrespectful and it isn't judgmental, it's just that you don't feel it in your heart. It's just not of interest. You just don't, don't have an interest. Now, the other being is excited and, you know, really excited and so on and so forth. And you can identify with that because when others are excited about something, I mean, really, truly, uh, we witness how we are when we get excited it's because we're all part of each other. Uh, so we're all reflections and mirrors. So when we we understand that, it's, it's, it, it's enjoyable, but it's going to be more and more where we're just not going to be in things that we used to be. It's just not going to be. Our interest will be more for perfecting ourselves, uh, learning more about who and what we are, uh, moving more into deep silence and peace, uh, in generosity and humbleness, where we don't judge and we aren't negative, um, and we're always in full compassion. You see, that that's part of the transition for ourselves, for each of us. And you, you, you almost, you know, we've been taught through certain things that we are not, wow, you're selfish, and, and I had this conversation earlier this morning, you're not, you're, you're selfish and you don't care about anything. You, and, and that's, that teaching is really way off kilter. It's different if you're selfish with the ego. That's a different story. That's a different kind of selfishness. That is not a good selfishness. But when you're selfish with the, within the heart mind, and when I'm talking about selfish, I'm talking about the selfish where you are working with yourself. You are learning about yourself, and so you go within. A lot of people would look at the, you, you know, because of how that is, there's a lot of judgment that's placed on us by others, okay? reason there's judgment is, is because we see part of ourselves in that which we are judging upon. We see part of ourselves. So... Again, that's love under pressure. Anger, hatred, fear, all love under pressure, all thoughts that we have literally embraced and brought into reality. So we, 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 we begin to understand that this is about me, and that's not being selfish. That's being attentive. I, I, I've chosen to learn about me and the God within me. So I become clearer and I'm able to increase my vibrational frequency with understanding of who and what I am. Now, how can I increase my vibrational frequency if I don't know who and what I am and I haven't gone within to explore that? And that I haven't forgiven myself and that I haven't come to the point yet where I love myself in all aspects of myself. See, these are all key parts to the puzzle in our heart mind. As we snap those pieces together in that puzzle, we create a beautiful picture or a moving mo you know, a motion picture. We we put things together and we aren't we aren't any we're not fearful anymore of the journey within. A lot of people are fearful of journeying within. They have they're afraid this is and again that's thought mo it's thought created. They're afraid of what they may find. And the reason that is is because they haven't forgiven themselves fully. And they haven't moved themselves into the understanding of loving every aspect of themselves. You know? And so what 
happens is is that they become fearful through thoughts through the ego mind. You don't want to go there. You don't want to go there. What if, what, what if you find something you don't like? Okay? You don't know what's inside you. You don't know if there's really a God. Maybe there's something else there. Maybe there's something else that's not good. These are all generated through the ego mind. And they're incessant, and they don't, and they don't end. They just continue. So this is why a lot of us do not go within journey. And here's some of the statements throughout the, the ages where people will make, well, that's stupid, go within. Yeah, right. Yeah, like there's something in us, what? Our organs or whatever? It's, it, it is because uh, many of us fear the unknown. And the unknown is where all the possibilities are, where all the adventures are is the unknown. So we fear it. So we, the ego convinces us to stay away from it. But in this time of massive change, and this massive change has been brought on by the collective consciousness of this planet Earth, Gaia, and there's no arguing, there's, there's really no debate on that because of the fact is that pure consciousness is what creates everything, source creation. Pure consciousness. And when you, when we, when we embrace that and we understand that in our own choosing, we start to figure it out. We start to say, you know something? I finally come full circle with myself to understand that, and, and this is all of us talking with, with ourselves, that I can really create anything I choose. And it's not ego, that's just a fact. And so you, you realize that, that you can create anything you choose, and not necessarily good things. See, it's, it's usually when, when we're not plugged into ourselves, when we, don't, when we aren't aware of what we are, and we don't have the relationship with God within, we, we inadvertently, we create into reality without knowing it, or knowing that we can, say. Now, the dark matter frequencies have done a lot with the planet so that, and the civilization so that you kind of are in a, a cage, so to speak, and the cage is made up of different frequencies. So when you, you begin to understand, you say, wait a minute, this thought that, that I've embraced, and it's so quick, it's so quick for a lot of us. The thoughts are so quick, and we do it so quickly that we don't even think about it. We, we, we don't, it's like boom, 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 boom. And you begin to realize that, so I, now I can watch my thoughts. I can stand outside of them, and I can watch them. And then I can, you know, pick and choose. You, it, it really, you aren't going into micromanagement. You're just saying, okay, so I create the thoughts through the heart mind that I choose to bring into reality. You see, you create the thoughts through your heart mind that you choose to bring into reality for yourself. Now, what the civilization has been trained to do is bring thoughts through the ego mind dictate to the heart mind to accept these thoughts and embrace them, create them into reality. This is why we are not aware or consciously aware of how quickly that takes place. And it's, it, for us, for all, most of us, it's a norm for us. It's, it's just, that's the avenue. That's the way it's always been. So therefore, it must be that's the way it's always going to be. And it isn't. Because each of us are masters, and we are in command, uh, and always have been, of us. It's just that we were trained that that's not true, that we are never in command of ourselves, that we must be led, guided, and directed, and governed. See? And that's not true. We are the opposite of that. And it's the same with everything. So you know immediately, if you because you're going to come across people, if you haven't already, that are very f 
frightened, very stressed out, um, very concerned, and it is and it is heartfelt. They're they're not doing it uh, out of an ego sense. They're doing it out of sheer fear, and of course the ego is dictating to them because they're not aware of the fact that they are the God within and that they could change that immediately if they chose to. The fear and everything, the worry and stress. You know how different it is when you realize that you have the power to shift things for yourself. Have any of you ever experienced that? When you come into the understanding with yourself, say, you truly do have the power to shift things for yourself. So you can move yourself out of fear, sorrow, whatever it may be that's lowering your frequency, that's pulling you down. You can shift it in the blink of the eye once you understand who and what you are. It's not about getting at all. It's not about having. It is about, it's always about how do you feel? You ask yourself, how do I feel? It's a simple statement, but it's real de- it's a deep um, statement, frequencies that it contains. And a lot of us don't ask that a lot of our, with ourselves. You get up in the morning, you say to yourself, how do I feel this morning? When you start giving love and attention to you, which is what's created outside of us, that oh, that's selfish and that's ego. No, it's not. It's because we learn to love ourselves. And what happens when you learn to love yourself? You discover a lot of wonderful frequencies. You move more into joy. The fear becomes less and less, and then it just dis- dissipates into nothingness. And you embrace joy and compassion. You embrace gentleness and kindness and generosity and humbleness. You embrace all these things. These are all things that you you discover that you are. That you it's it's a natural state of being. See, it's not all bumpy and jerky, uh, as as those who can have controlled this planet wish it to be. And understand something: all of this, everything. And, and this is the point that you, and this is very crucial that we understand to step out of the matrix. View it from afar. And we, we know that there, and, and this will be a later explanation, but we, we know the construct of the matrix. We know how it's put together. But you step outside of this part of the matrix so that you understand that you you are in command of you. You choose how you're going to feel, how you're going to perceive or, or look at things, and how that is with you. So every one of us determine what is going to take place with this planet and this civilization. Understand that. that each one of us are omnipotently powerful. That is, a, that is an absolute fact. And when we fully embrace that with full understanding, then we start to begin, we begin to understand the responsibility that we have with ourselves, the direction that we choose to move our power, move our understanding, how we choose to affect the planet and, and on all those with us. how we interpret and design ourselves. So the only thing that has always been used with all of us gods is one thing that's been used. And it starts with a thought. And then it begins with heavy programming. And the thought is supercharged. And it becomes ominous, unfathomable strength. And it's built 
that the lower dark matter frequencies have always used with the civilization of this planet and others. That one, one thing, it's a thought. And when they know how to use it amongst billions of gods, then they can control them, especially when the gods are not aware of who and what they are. You see? It's all connected. It's all finitely engineered. But the power and the joy is the knowledge of how it has been constructed. We know what I've just shared is as, is as simple as it gets of how this is all put together. How it is all, how it pulls on different people's egos and how it nurtures those egos and how it tricks each and every one of us into that fear-based mentality. Because after a while, understand, we're all affected because we're all connected. You aren't really affected unless you're connected. You really aren't. So people say, well, well, how do I know I'm connected with everyone? Well, look at yourself and see how you're affected with the civilization and things that occur on this planet. How are you affected? In other words, how do you feel? How do you feel about all this going on? And do you love yourself? And how is your relationship with the God within you? And how is the relationship with yourself? See, have you forgiven every, have you forgiven every aspect of yourself? Of anything that you have, have uh, experienced in this life? See, it's interesting because most of us are trained to, to, to work and do things outside of ourselves all the time. And of course, the ego's there feeding us all the time, guiding, leading us and guiding us all the time. We've to go within and to be there permanently, it's a different, it's a big difference. And when you do that and you have forgiven and loved yourself and you're in a, in a beautiful, loving relationship with the God within you, it affects everyone around you in a good way, a very uplifting, positive frequency way. So the very thing that people are fearing about all of this that has been constructed, so to speak, the very things that they're feeling, and there's a lot of people, and I'm sure you know, that are absolutely frightened out of their shorts. I mean, to the point of complete panic and emotional degradation. So, and we all feel that, but have you noticed that it's getting lighter and lighter? And what can you do for our brothers and sisters that are experiencing this? Love them. What can you do with people that strike out and are angry and judge and everything? Love them. And I don't just mean you say you love them. I mean that you love them through your heart, mind, and through the gods each and every one of us are. It is the only way. And it is a proven fact. And anybody that ever wishes to debate that, we could debate it for eons. Because the fact of the matter is, is that we've, we've, we've done spectacular things in a short period of time of our existence as gods. Because a few billion years is a short period of time. So, you begin to realize that what is it we want, we will have. What is it we desire for ourselves, for everyone? We will have. Because we generate it. We create it. It's always the way it's been. And so, for all of these people who are not yet embracing themselves, and, and loving the gods and have that really deep relationship with themselves. We love them. And, and 
people say, well, yeah, that's really not easy to do. No, it's not. Didn't say it was. But you practice it. And by using the frequency and the tone, love, 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 it goes up, love, and it generates a frequency. And the frequency is emitted by us, for us, of us, and it affects all things around us, and, and, it, and it assists in increasing the vibrational frequencies of those who are in much lower existence as far as frequencies. Fear is a very low frequency. So when we love them through the heart mind, everyone, it shifts everything. When we hate or we operate in fear, disgust, confusion, we're in low frequencies. So it actually feeds the very thing that we created that we don't care to have, but is. So fighting and bombing and destroying and power and who has the most nuclear weapon capacity and who has this, who's the most powerful on the planet and everything, has never, ever worked because it is implementing fear. Always. One country will not attack another because the other country is more powerful so that they, they bend. They genuflect. And they, they, they take guidance from the more powerful country. You see what, how this works? And we all know this. Has it done anything for the planet and its advancement and the peace of the civilization? Has it done anything? It really hasn't. So collectively now, more and more of us are coming together moving into complete harmony and love in ourselves to begin meditating all over the planet. And my and I, I have the faith that eventually, as I shared a long time ago, to witness the entire civilization of this planet meditating every day. That is my ultimate desire for the civilization of the planet that everyone is meditating every day together. And, it's in, and I'll share that later on how that can be. So, this meditation is a very simple meditation, and it is love. So if you will, go to the place where you're not going to be interrupted. And I'm sure we all are. And the first thing that we desire to do is to relax our bodies. If our bodies are stressed, because they're like sponges. So it, it is pretty much common understanding with ourselves that if, we, if, if, if we're being uh, flooded with fear from others on the planet, if we're being flooded with anxieties from others on the planet. And I'm not talking about yourself. I'm talking since we're connected. The body's like a sponge. It absorbs it. So the stress is created. Uh, and different anxieties, and all of us have different effects on us. And we, we relax the body. So body, let's relax. Let's, let's just let go. Let's let go of any fears that, 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 that we may have taken on. Let's let go of any worries, any stresses. Let's just, I, I'd like to have us just let it all go, alleviate it. And the body, you'll be able to do that. And if you need a visualization, use the hammock. And the hammock is where you're laying, lying in the hammock. It's on an afternoon, a sunny, um, sun, uh, sunny, uh, summer afternoon and you're in this hammock and you don't move you are in such a peaceful peaceful state that you aren't even thinking of anything you ever done that 
you don't even motivate you. You're not, you're not in the mind. You're outside of it. So the ego has no effect, and everything is stilled. The ego mind, the subconscious mind, and you're in this place where you have not even one thought. This is the place that we desire to be a lot. So by being in that position, you can hear a little bit of the leaves flickering in the breeze, you know, rustling. You can hear some noises in the neighborhood or wherever you may be out in nature. And that's it. And you notice that you just don't move. You're in complete peace and tranquility and benevolence. So we do this with the body. We do it with ourselves. And it can always be done. And so as we do relax the body, we move into the now. And the now is all we have. So as we move into the now, we still the mind. The ego mind. And we still the subconscious mind. And the chatter and the noise that we all experience subsides. Now we don't we don't go into the past, but we all do, because we reminisce. Oh, I remember when, oh, I wish I could have that back. I wish I could relive that moment right there. So we get, some of us get seduced and we bring the past into the future to create our future and relive the past in that future that we created from the past. Is that a bad thing? No, it's up to, it's up to each and every one of us, but we, we really should, we don't care to do that. Because that's all done, it's gone, it's dead, it's over. We move forward and we continue to experience new things, new avenues. That's why a lot of us have a miscombobulated subconscious mind. Because we keep rehashing things that are long, long dead. They're over, they're history. Now, when we're in the now, we're creating our future. And you write down, what is the, what's the future I desire? What's the world I desire? How do I choose to exist? And what kind of existence and environment? And you write it down. And you stick it on the wall where you're going to see it all the time. And reflect that, and, and, and reflect it so that you continue to impress upon yourself. And this is when you add things and you subtract things. No, I don't really, I think not that. You're designing your own future. You're the artist. You're the architect. You're the designer. You're the constructor. So, see, but when we're in the past, we aren't doing that. Crazy kind of thing. So we're just in the now. And we relax the body and we want to breathe. We want to breath in through our noses. We want to take it in. And this is how you take it in. You, if, if you don't know where the chakra alignments are or anything, get a chart off the internet and print it up. But you, as you breathe in, breath in this frequency, this energy, this field, as positive divine energy, and you pull it up through the sacral chakra, it's groin area, you take it right up the center of your body, right? All the key chakra centers, all the way up through the throat chakra, all the way up to the head, and into the, uh, underneath the cranium, the, the, your skull cap. And just underneath that, right where the pineal gland is, and the pineal, uh, you, if you don't know where it's at, get a picture of it off the internet, and you'll see it, so you can visualize it. So what you do is, is you bring that up and you use your muscles to move it all the way up, your abdominal muscles, all the muscles in the body of the center, and you push it up all the way up, all the way over the brain and over the pineal gland. And then you create a fluid, a, a frequency, a liquid, and that liquid is then released 
and saturates the brain and the pineal. It goes through the brain and into the pineal. And the pineal eventually will open up completely in total health, and it will be a gateway to all the particles of existence. And it will be a gateway beyond consciousness. That's what it is. And so as we do this, we, we repeat it. We bring it up the sacral chakra all the way up into the head and the brain and then underneath the skull cap it sits there as a liquid in the back of the head and then it is literally released forward saturating the pineal and then it comes out as we breath out and this is a constant wave it is a pulsing wave and it goes down and out and then we bring it back up and then out, and then up, down and out, down and out, up and in, up and in. And as we're doing this, we are always reminded that we have an ego mind, and the ego mind is doing everything it can to stay in order of control of us by continually trying to convince us that this is stupid. This isn't work. What are you doing? You don't know what you're doing. Come over here with me. You're fine with me. And, it's, and, and that's what happens, and we're aware of it, and that's a positive thing. So th that we address the ego, and we say, ego, I love you, but you're not in charge here. Take a seat. And don't think it's just going to do that automatically. Because it ain't going to listen to you, and eventually it will listen to you because of how you move into higher and higher frequency with yourself. Now, as we, do breath, as we do breath it in, we're sustaining this. And as we sustain it, we can use frequencies such as I am love, I am power, I am light, you know, I am compassion, I am gentleness, I am kindness, I am bliss, I am benevolence, I am tranquility. We can use this as we sustain it for a few seconds, and then we continue moving it. It's like a wave effect, a pulsing, and it doesn't end. So this divine positive energy is circulated and communicated with us on an ongoing basis through source creation, pure consciousness. And as it does come in, it comes in through our God within us and through the heart mind. It does not come in through the ego mind. The ego mind wouldn't understand it, say. And it would just throw it aside. But through the heart mind as it comes in, it's a frequency, it's a vibration. And it's a high frequency, and it communicates to us. And it, it is love. And you are love. Not complicated at all. So the source creation, this pure consciousness, communicates with us on an ongoing basis. And eventually some of us understand and realize that we are love. All of us. And you let that you allow that to sink in deeply. And see, once you embrace that fully that you really understand that each and every one of us are love, then we begin to move into in love, which then moves us into more enlightenment, and we sustain in love longer and longer periods of time, which eventually the culmination is full enlightenment, to be in love all the time. So we understand that we, we are, we, we vibrate through the heart mind, not the ego mind. And we embrace that. And it's our own choosing, our own direction, our own understanding. And we are with the God within us. That's powerful. That's, when you embrace that and you decide to embrace it, it is just, it's phenomenal. The feeling, the vibration, the frequency. Uh, that you are, that you begin to interact with, is absolutely amazing. It's phenomenal. It's something.
something that you don't care to leave. Once you taste of it, you will not leave it. And so, we are one. Your body, your God, your heart, mind, all of it, we are one with ourselves. We are love. We have others with us. We have the archangels, the cherubim, the seraphim, the archetypes, all of the angels. This is a civilization that vibrates at a higher frequency than we do. Sometimes they appear in humanoid form to give us messages. Sometimes we just feel them. Other times, thousands surround each and every one of us. They are of the highest, deepest, eternal love from the highest, deepest, eternal love and the highest and deepest, eternal gratitude. There's trillions of them. We also have the Ascended Masters. They're with us. Kuan Yin, Maitreya, Buddha, Lakshmi, Ganesh, Gaia, St. Germain, Sananda, Jesus, El Moria, Abundantia, Pell, Thoth, many, many, many more. Some with names you can't even pronounce. And they have ascended out of body and hold God form. What is God form? It's a frequency. It's pure consciousness. Supreme reality. Love. We have ascended into body to experience physical form. So our gods are in physical form, experiencing physical form. Their gods are out of body. They hold their god form. And they too are pure consciousness, as we all are. And they too are of the highest, deepest, eternal love from the highest, deepest, eternal love and the highest and deepest, eternal gratitude. We all maintain this high frequency to bring this conscious awareness of this meditation for everyone. So we form a circle of light, a halo. Any of us with physical form, is there's no physical form, there is just the light. The light is a very high vibrational frequency created by the gods that we are. And, and the frequency is love, deep eternal love, and high, and, and high pure consciousness. So as we form this light, this brilliant halo, circle of light, it's so bright it grays out the darkness of space. And we begin to levitate ourselves up, arm in arm, hand in hand, so to speak. And as we do this, we a gossamer field is there. And it is full of brilliant light reflecting glitter. Greens and reds and purples and whites. And, and as you see this gossamer, which you can kind of see through, and you see that the reflective particles like trillions of lightning bugs, multicolored, but brighter. And... This field is a high frequency, love, and the field, uh, for instance, the emerald green flaming healing light of Archangel Raphael is a column to remind us that we are the healing power. The violet blue purple flaming light of Archangel Michael uh, is a column that reminds us that of our power, of our resolve, of our strength. And we have the white fire. It's just a column that reminds us that we maintain a high level of frequency which then becomes our protective armor. The white fire is a high and brilliant, very high frequency that is love. Deep eternal love. Now, we are completely protected from all of the low dark matter frequencies because they cannot sustain themselves in the higher frequencies. If they try, they'll be vaporized. The only way they can is if we choose, we choose, whether it's consciously, unconsciously, or subconsciously, to 
lower our vibrational frequencies and to be players in the story rather than watchers, then we open the door and they come in. Now, if that does happen, we are reminded of the column of the purple transmuting flame. We can bring it in and we can transmute all of those lower vibrational frequencies in a neutralized substance and just literally send them back to source creation, the great central sun. The great central sun is housed within us all. Source creation is housed within us all. So we send it back to its origin. And it's been transmuted into neutral light substance. And then we have the violet ray right behind the purple transmuting flame. It's a column to remind us that we can bring it in and, and literally purify the area of where these low frequencies were housed. And then we have the golden white pink light of Prime Source Creator God, Mother, Father, God, Masculine, Feminine, Feminine, Source Creation, that which created us all, pure consciousness, deep eternal love. So as we continue, we see this massive, massive crystalline tower, column. It's massive. It's larger, many times larger than this planet. We created this through pure consciousness of that which we are, our source of creation. And it literally, you can see as it waves out and literally floods this planet and all life on it, in it, above it, and below it, and it literally floods all the planets in our solar system. We are shifting this solar system. So as we continue to levitate up, we step outside the body. Those of us in physical form will move outside the body and float above it effortlessly. As we do this, we immediately call out to all the light energy beings that are in all that there is, ever has been, ever will be, ever beyond and forever. And only those who are consciously aware only those who are of the highest, deepest, eternal love from the highest, deepest, eternal love and the highest, and deepest, eternal gratitude can join us in this meditation that's now in this circle of light. They're in full compassion, non-judgment, non-ego, non-negativity, stillness of mind, gentleness, kindness, generosity, humbleness, bliss, joy, peace, tranquility, benevolence, and they come in the Googaplexes. One Googaplex fills this universe. They come in the trillions of Googaplexes from every direction. And arm in arm, hand in hand, their gods with our gods, our gods with theirs, they join us in this meditation and this now in this circle of life. They are of the highest of deepest, deepest, deepest eternal gratitude and the deep, highest of deepest eternal love, we are of the highest of deepest, deepest, deepest eternal gratitude, and the highest of deepest eternal love, and we're all one, and we're all love, and our god light energy is absolutely everywhere, continues to intensify, and continues to expand. We call upon all of the inhabitants of inner earth, hollow earth, above earth, below earth, Agartha, inner earth, all of them, many, many, many civilizations, and only those who are of the highest consciously aware, they're of the highest of deepest eternal love, from the highest of deepest eternal love, and the highest of deepest eternal gratitude, and join us in this meditation, and this now in the circle of light. They're in full compassion, non-judgment, non-ego, non-negativity, stillness of mind, gentleness, kindness, generosity, humbleness, bliss, joy, peace, tranquility, benevolence. And they come in the billions, arm in arm, hand in hand, their gods with our gods, our gods with theirs. They 
join us in this now, in this meditation, in this circle of light. They are of the highest, the deepest, deepest, deepest eternal gratitude, and the highest of deepest eternal love. We are of the highest of deepest, deepest, deepest eternal gratitude, and the highest of deepest eternal love, and we're all one, and we're all love. And our God light energy is absolutely everywhere, continues to intensify, and continues to expand. We call upon the galactics, off worlders, many, many, many of these civilizations. Just name a fraction of our familiarity with them. Pleiadians, Syrians, Arcturians, Andromedans, only those who are of the highest, deepest eternal love consciously aware. Of the highest, deepest eternal love, from the highest, deepest eternal love, and of the highest of deepest eternal gratitude can join us in this meditation and this now in this circle of life. They're in full compassion, non-judgment, non-ego, non-negativity, stillness of mind, gentleness, kindness, generosity, humbleness, bliss, joy, peace, tranquility, benevolence, and they come in the billions. They've been assisting us in our evolution, in our enlightenment, in our ascension, freeing ourselves from our own self-imposed bondage and slavery. Their gods with our gods, our gods with theirs. They're with us in this meditation in this circle of light in this now. They are of the highest, of deepest, deepest, deepest eternal gratitude and the highest of deepest eternal love. We are of the highest of deepest, deepest, deepest eternal gratitude and the highest of deepest eternal love. We are all one. We are all love. And our God light energy is absolutely everywhere, continues to intensify and continues to expand. We call upon all of our loved ones who have ascended out of body in this lifetime and all lifetimes that we've inhabited. And only those who are consciously aware that they are of the highest, deepest eternal love from the highest, deepest eternal love and the highest, of deepest eternal gratitude can join us in this meditation in this now, in this circle of light. They're in full compassion, non-judgment, non-negativity, non-ego, stillness of mind, gentleness, kindness, generosity, humbleness, bliss, joy, peace, tranquility, benevolence, and they come in the billions, arm in arm, hand in hand, their gods with our gods, our gods with theirs, they are with us in this now, in this meditation, in this circle of life. They are of the highest of deepest, deepest, deepest eternal gratitude and the highest of deepest eternal love. We are of the highest of deepest, deepest, deepest eternal gratitude and the highest of deepest eternal love. And we are all one. And we are all love. And our God light energy is absolutely everywhere, continues to intensify and continues to expand. We call upon all the light energy beings who have decided to be housed in the following forms on, in, above, and below this planet Earth Gaia in this now, this meditation, a circle of light. Only those who are of the highest, deepest eternal love, from the highest, deepest eternal love, and the highest of deepest eternal gratitude can join us. And just to name a few of them, Fairies, sprites, elves, gnomes, dwarves, trees, elementals, earth, air, water, fire, ether, the mermaid, the dolphin, the whale, the pegasus, the unicorn, the centaur, the minotaur, many, many, many more. They are in full compassion, non-judgment, non-ego, 
non-negativity, stillness of mind, gentleness, kindness, generosity, humbleness, bliss, joy, peace, tranquility, benevolence. And they come in the trillions. Colors, shapes, sizes, forms, configurations of which we've never seen before. Arm in arm, hand in hand, their gods with our gods, our gods with theirs. They are with us in this now, in this meditation, in this circle of light. They are of the highest of deepest, deepest, deepest eternal gratitude and the highest of deepest eternal love. We are of the highest of deepest, deepest, deepest eternal gratitude and the highest of deepest eternal love. We are all one. We are all love. And our godlike energy is in all that there is, ever has been, ever will be, ever beyond, and forever. And it continues to intensify and it continues to expand. We look up and we see our meditative sphere. It said center circle. We created this sphere over two years ago. It holds all of our meditations in perpetual motion. Hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of them. They don't dissipate, they intensify, they expand. The highest of highest high frequencies of the deepest of eternal love and the deepest of eternal gratitude. That's why this sphere can be seen, heard, and felt in all that there is, ever has, been, ever will be, ever beyond, and forever. Feel it as it floods you, saturates and bathes each and every one of us with pure love. which is all that there is, which is the highest power of the highest frequency through source creation, pure consciousness, and beyond consciousness. Pure love, that which made all of us, that which made Mother, Father, God, the masculine, the feminine, prime source creator, God, source creation, of that which created us. Feel it through your physical body and your etherical bodies. Embrace the love that you are. We look down upon this planet Earth, Gaia. It sits in amazing grace we are being flooded all of our brothers and sisters all life the highest value of the universe is is being expanded nurtured embraced love joy bliss peace tranquility benevolence And it continues to intensify and it continues to expand. Love. I join you in the meditation and return to close us out.
with you. Embrace it. It is what this frequency is what's going to levitate the planet and the civilization into the much higher frequency realms. Never looking back. 
never reminiscing on what was, but creating on what is in the now. And a planet paradise and a God planet. The gods within these bodies are the heaven, the kingdom of God, the heaven, and the bodies, the bodies themselves are the earth. So, you know, we are heaven on earth, literally speaking. So we carry our intent of love, of which we are made of, and we literally flood and saturate and bathe the planet on and above and below it, inside now, continuously. We do this by continually journeying within, forgiving ourselves, loving ourselves, every aspect, and continually practicing increasing our vibrational frequencies into more love, understanding, gentleness and kindness, generosity and humbleness, bliss, joy, and peace, benevolence and tranquility. We will be back here again tonight, and I'm asking that everybody, if they can, make it at about 10.25 p.m. Uh, we will commence at exactly 10.45 p.m. Uh, the uh, togetherness of this meditation over the planet, all groups, and full commitment through their heart minds participating. It is definitely an absolute liberation for this planet. And we are here to witness this shift and the shift of which we are. We'll be back here Sunday, uh, April 5th, 2020, to continue our Global Guided Meditation Call.